The Challenge of the Yukon. On King, on your husky. <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Jimmy Haven knew something was wrong as he trudged along silently through the snow beside his father. John Haven, a worried look on his face, had tried twice to say something, but the words seemed to stick in his throat. Chap, Jimmy's big Siberian dog, seemed to sense something too. He walked quietly at his young master's heels instead of frisking about as he usually did. Jimmy waited, and at last his father spoke. Jimmy, I don't quite know how to tell you this. But there comes a time in every boy's life when he has to grow up inside. Act like a man, I mean. Uh-huh. You're only ten. It's awfully early to ask you to do it. But I can't see any other way. I'll do anything for you and Mom. I know, I know. That's what makes this so hard for me. You've always been fine, son. What is it, Dad? Since your mom's been sick, I haven't been able to do much work on my claim. Yes, I know. It's been a pretty lean winter for all of us. I saw the doctor this morning. He says we're going to have to send your mother to a warmer climate for a while. Send her away, you mean? Just till she's better. She can go to your Aunt Jane in California. Won't we go too? No, son, we'd have to stay here and work my claim. I'm bigger now. I can help you, Dad. You're going to have to help in lots of ways, Jim. You know, it'll cost a lot of money to send her there. I've got some in my bank. You can have that. <laughs> Thanks, son. But it's going to take more than that. I just haven't enough left. The only way I can see to get it is... Well... Oh, I may as well say it and get it over with. We're going to have to sell, chap. Oh, not... Not chap. This is what I meant, son, about growing up inside. I know how much that dog means to you. I love him almost as much as you do. But we have to think of Mom. But Dad, Jeff is... He's just like one of our family. He, I know, he... Jimmy, I know. But he'll make a fine sled dog. Ned Gray will give us $200 for him. Ned lives close by. You could see Chap once in a while. Remember, Jim, it's for your mother. Yes, I know. I'd rather have cut out my tongue and ask you to do this. The dog is yours. It's up to you to decide. I'm going to leave you now and let you think it over. Believe me, son, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> Steve Tracy paced back and forth on the main street of Selkirk, a scowl on his face. It deepened as another man hurried up to him. Where the heck have you been? I've been waiting here till I'm almost frozen. I'm sorry, Steve. I couldn't get here sooner. Everything's set? No. We can't pull that job tonight, Steve. One of the dogs went lame. Why? Which one? It's Dan, the big gray one. He's the strongest dog on the team. We'd never make a getaway without him. We can't wait, Pete. If we hang around here any longer, people are going to start wondering who we are. Anyway, we got to get into that bank tonight. One of the guards is sick. There's only one man watching it. But Steve will be carrying a lot of golden supplies. We need a fast team. Maybe we could buy another dog somewhere. We can't take a chance doing business with anybody. We'll get that gold and get out of here tonight. Or we won't do the job at all. Robbing the bank's only half of it. The getaway is just as important, remember? I tell you, we can't do it without another dog. Hey, look. That's a fine dog. Get you that kid's sled. Maybe he'd sell him to us. Gosh, that dog's a beauty. He's just what we need. Come on, let's talk to him. Hello, kid. Hello. 
Now, Jeff, you stay here till I get back. Fine dog you have there. I'll say he is. He's the best dog in the world. You uh, wouldn't think of selling him, would you? No. What's wrong, kid? He is sold. This is my last day with him. You stay right here, Chappie. Huh. Too bad we didn't get to him sooner. This dog would sure be the answer to our problem. He may be the answer anyway. Oh, what do you mean? Before that kid gets back, go in and get something to feed this dog. Feed him? What's the idea? Get friendly with him. Then follow them. See where they live. If we can pick him up just before we do the job at the bank and take him with us, <laughs> there's no sense buying a dog. That's Ned Gray now. Morning, Ned. Come in. How are you, Sean? Am I too early? Nope. I was just going to feed Chap before you took him. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in town. Bank's been robbed. Robbed? Yeah. I went there to get the money to pay you for Chap. Somebody knocked the bank guard out cold last night. Got away with about $20,000 worth of gold. Have any idea who did it? No, not the faintest. God didn't even see who'd hit him. Then we had that heavy snowstorm early this morning. Covered every track they might have left. Maybe it was someone here in town. Could be. Or else they had a mighty good dog team to carry all that gold and supplies for a getaway. It's too bad Sergeant Preston isn't in town. Well, they wired Dawson headquarters and got an answer that Preston should be here in a couple of days. By that time, there won't be a trace of the robbers. Nobody even knows which direction they took. Oh, here's the money for your dog. Better give it to you now. Thanks, Ned. Come on out with me. I'll give Chap his breakfast. Then you can take him. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy feels kind of bad about giving him up. So you won't mind if we don't bring him back to the house, will you? Oh, no, of course not. He's back here in his doghouse. Yeah. You tell young Jimmy he can come and see Chap any time he wants to. I can't uh, hate to take him in a way. Well, you're doing me a big favor. I can't think of anyone else I'd sell him to. Here, Chap. Here, Chap. Well, that's funny. He isn't in his doghouse. There aren't any tracks around here. He must have gone off before it snowed last night. That's funny. Chap never goes off like this. We've never had to chain him. You take this money back, Ned. When Chap comes back, we can do business. It was two days later that Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police arrived at the Haven cabin. His huge lead dog, King, stayed close to the Mounted side as they were welcomed by John. Hello there, Sergeant. How are you? Come in. Hello, John. How are you, Jimmy? Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, King. <laughs> you just get to town, Sergeant? Got in early this morning, John. I'm investigating the bank robbery. Did you get any clues, Sergeant? Oh, I know, Jim. I'm afraid they didn't leave any. I understand your dog disappeared the night of the robbery. Yes, he did. But we didn't connect it in any way. He hasn't come back. I don't know where he could have gone. Chap never did anything like this before. Well, Jim, they may not have stolen your dog, but that's the only lead we have. The snow covered the trail completely, so we don't know whether they went north or south or whether they left town at all. Did Chap have any distinguishing marks, Jim? I know he's a big white Siberian, but that's not enough to go on. His right ear had some notches in it from that fight he was in with Pete's Husky. Oh. And he was wearing a big leather collar. Yeah, what's that? Sounds like... It's Chap. Maybe... Chap's come back. That's his bark. What is Chap? Yes, he did come back. Oh, Dad. Oh, he's lame. His feet are all cut. And... Oh, oh Chappy, they've beaten you. Oh, those dirty rats. Look at him. They'd used a whip on him. Why down here, King? Let's have a look at Chap, Jimmy. They've had no right to beat him. Put your head in my lap, Chappy boy. There. Oh, oh easy, fella, easy. Yes, his feet are badly cut. He's traveled a long way. Good rest and some food will fix him up, Jim. I'd like to get a hold of the people who stole him. So would I, John. And I think Chappie's made it possible. What do you mean, Sergeant? Well, Jim, the men who stole him used him in harness. They must have needed him badly. I'm going to take King and backtrack on Chap's trail. 
We may be able to follow the thieves in the spot where Chap got away. Could I go with you, Sergeant? I'd like to get hold of the men who did this. It won't be easy, John. Chap would come home the shortest way, and that means cross-country traveling. I don't care. I want to do it. I'll get Mrs. Gray to take care of Mary and Jimmy. All right, John, but hurry. We're starting right away. Sergeant Preston and John Haven, led by King, followed Chap's trail, backtracking over hills and frozen rivers. It was well into the second day that they approached a rude shelter built near the trail leading west. Uh, that looks like the place they made camp. Good work, King. I was afraid we might lose that trail. You think this is the place Chap got away? Oh, it must be, John. Couldn't have come any farther in that length of time. We shouldn't have any trouble trailing them from here if the weather stays clear. The tracks are clear enough. King, here, boy. These tracks, fella. After them. They're the men we want. Here. You think we'll have much farther to go, Sergeant? This last hill, I'm just about winded. Well, we're at the top of it now, John. Well, we'd better rest a while. Yeah. I never realized before what it takes to be a Mountie. We've covered a lot of ground the last three days. Uh, John, look. Down there in the valley in that clump of trees. Campfire smoke. Yeah. Do you think it's theirs? I hope so. We'll wait until it's dark and surprise them. Hello. We saw your campfire and thought we'd join you. Black King, quiet fella. Yeah? Well, we're not... St oh. You're a Mountie. Yes, I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is John Haven. Well, you're welcome to use our camp, Sergeant. We're just packing up to leave. Come on, Pete, get those dogs ready. Yeah, sure. We just came down from Dawson. Before you hitch up that sled, Pete, I'd like to have a look at the load you're carrying. Go through it, John. Well, sure. Uh, you can't do that, John. Surely you wouldn't object, unless there's something you'd rather we didn't see. Why, you... And I wouldn't try reaching for that gun if I were you. My dog's right beside you, Pete. It's here, Sergeant. Bags of gold, and the bags have the bank's name stamped on them. Oh. You're under arrest, both of you, for the robbery of the Selkirk Bank. Watch them, King. Dad, you're back. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jim. Hello, son. Did you get the robbers? Yes, we caught them, Jimmy. They're locked up. How's Chad? Oh, he's lots better. Mom and I were getting worried. You were gone so long. Yeah, I'd better go right into her. I'll be back in a few minutes, Sergeant. <laughs> right down here, King. Where is Chap, Jimmy? He's in Mom's room, lying beside her bed. His feet are better. I... I guess maybe I should have taken him over to Mr. Gray's. But got the money for Dad. I thought maybe you wouldn't care if I waited till you got back. Your dad told me about, uh, you having to sell Chap, Jim. Your, uh... But he's fond of that dog, aren't you? Yes, I brought him up when he was a little pup, and he's... Well, I don't have to tell you. I know how you feel about King. Well, Jim, I have some good news for you. You're not going to have to sell, chap. Sergeant, what do you mean? Well, Jimmy, the bank offered $500 reward for the capture of those thieves. And I think it should be given to Chappie and your father. Oh, gosh! Then we can send Mom to California, and I can keep Chappie, and everything's going <laughs> to be all right. That's right, son, that's right. But, but you and King really captured them. Well, that's our job, Jimmy. But if it hadn't been for Chap, we couldn't have done it. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Chappie's the best friend I have. You know, Jim, I think I know just what you mean. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.